I think I met more Canadians here than any other uh, nationality at this point. We've had comments that say, well, it's easy for you to say that it's safe if you're in a guarded community. Uh, we've encountered a whole different experience of humanity. What do you guys miss the most from Canada? We were getting so close, but then inflation started happening. So I was like, all right, we need, we need something. They say, oh, but the price goes up, the price goes down. Bitcoin's not holding its value. That's sort of like standing in front of a funhouse mirror and trying to measure your height. Hey guys, hey guys, it's Ryan and Jessica coming to you from El Salvador. Salvador. So this is part two, part two. Of, an, of an interview you can watch really in any order you want. Mm -hmm. Part one of this interview is going to be over on Money Delix, Francesco's channel. Uh, we do a house tour. We talk about where we like to shop, what we like to eat, um, Just our journey things. here, yeah. yeah, that kind of stuff. And in this portion, we're going to talk more about Bitcoin. We're going to talk about how our perspective on life has changed since coming to El Salvador, our thoughts on the future of El Salvador. You can watch them in either order, but here we're sitting down with Francesco and we're super thrilled to be here. Francesco, thank you so much for this idea. This yeah, is a great this idea. Is great. Yeah. Thank you guys. I always receive the same questions about El Salvador and I thought who would answer these questions better than you guys? Well, thank so, you. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Thank you for agreeing to do this. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Happy to. And if you guys are ready, let's get to it. Let's go. Okay, let's jump right in. Let's start from feelings. What I'm talking about is that from the first day you guys arrived here in El Salvador, mm -hmm. how did your feelings about the country, your perceptions, your uh, in fears or your hopes, how did that change uh, since today? Right, right. So I remember when I first float the idea of El Salvador to you, it was a hard no. Hard no. No. Okay. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, for the past decades, El Salvador has built up a reputation as being a violent and dangerous and very poor country. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you say El Salvador to a couple of Canadians, that's the first thing you think about. Yeah. And so initially, the answer was a hard no. But I said, well, let's just look into it. Right. And over time, as we started to investigate and understand El Salvador, um, more clearly, it became evident that really it's the best place to go. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah, I think yeah. it's fair to say. And I mean, yeah. like, um, when you, it, it really helps to have eyes on the ground if you're looking to come to El Salvador. That really helps with making the move a little bit easier. I know that mm -hmm. eventually we had eyes on the ground here. We had Nikki and James. Yeah. yeah. But at first glance, when you had first mentioned it to me, you were looking at real estate on the internet and just picture and it's just it was it was fright frightening and yeah. overwhelming but yeah the few uh the few google maps street view points on the map they don't show uh a very welcoming country right mm -hmm. now but that's not the whole picture uh so we're glad that we um we made the change yeah. we made the leap here yeah. uh since coming here uh i mean the perception has completely and totally changed in many respects, this is a, just a normal country. Uh, San Salvador is indistinguishable from any major city in the U.S. or Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, there are remnants of previous eras around. You can see the evidence of it. Uh, there are mansions out in La Libertad that are all decayed and worn down. And, and there are, you know, areas that have kind of tin roofs and stuff. The poverty is still evident. You can still see it. But um, this is a country that is just exploding forward with progress. And uh, we're just thrilled to be here yeah. and see that progress firsthand and to be part of it yeah. and the joy on the, the locals' faces as that all those changes come down. So let's touch on safety because it's a question that I still get despite uh, for us understanding that this country is safe. Okay? Yeah. But of course, as you said, the perception from outside is different. So what do you guys can say to our audience about safety? It's safe. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm going to address this because we've had comments that say, well, it's easy for you to say that it's safe if you're in a guarded community. When we're out and about doing our everyday things, going to grocery stores, like doing the shop, doing errands that anybody does in a lot of a day, you feel safe yeah. no matter what. You don't, the walls mean nothing here. Yes. 
you know, yeah. I think that's... Yeah, when we first got here in our first week, we didn't know what to expect. Um, I was nervous about Jessica going anywhere on her own. Mm -hmm. um, I was nervous going anywhere after dark on my own. Um, but after two, three weeks, we started to see that this was not a, a perception that really lines up with how the country really is. Mm -hmm. And we just started to feel safer and safer. And really, statistically, right now, since we got here, El Salvador is even safer than when we first arrived. And uh, you're actually more likely to be a victim of violent crime in Toronto than you are here in El Salvador. Uh, so that's mind boggling to us. Yeah. I mean, you can put in that list uh, way more cities. We yeah. can put Los Angeles, Chicago, New York, San Francisco. Like, yeah. El Salvador right now is safer than the, pretty much all the big metro areas in the United States and in Canada. Probably, yes. I don't think it's a stretch to say that. <laughs> yes, I think that's probably true. Very yeah. interesting. Which is like, and that's new. That's only been true for about a year. And uh, it's, it's such a shocking change, especially for the people who live here and grew up here. You know, it wasn't long ago you wouldn't leave your house at night. Kids would go straight home from school, they'd go in the house, bars on the windows, doors locked. Mm -hmm. That was the normal life here. And then almost overnight, suddenly it's safer than what's traditionally understood to be developed and safe countries. Yeah, yeah I have this conversation sometimes with locals and they're still like uh, uh, confused because it's so, they are so not used to this level of safety or, or living the, their lives like this, going out at night. Like it's, it's crazy. So to touch on what you said earlier, that you guys still, you can still see the poverty here and the country that is still developing. Yeah. Is there here something that you guys have learned or experienced that you could have never learned or experienced in Canada? Canada has a reputation for being a kind, friendly, polite place, right? Um, but I think that really that's, more accurately described as a passive-aggressive place. Uh, Canada has a reputation as being a very free and open society. It's probably more accurate to say that that's true as long as you remain within certain narrow parameters set forth by authorities. So we grew up in that, immersed in that. It was normal for us to really feel limited in what we can say, what we can do. Um, and to always be wondering about the sincerity of others' intentions uh, and, and to be, I guess, frequently feeling damned with faint praise, if you, if you get my meaning. Here in El Salvador, and I don't want to speak for you, but jump in if I'm not speaking correctly, uh, we've encountered a whole different experience of humanity. Uh, the warmth and generosity here is uncharacteristic of anything we're, we were used to. Um, perfect strangers will open their door to you, they'll feed you, they'll help you find where you need to go and what, what you need to obtain, um, and they don't expect anything in return. Yeah. Uh, in fact, you know, early on when we first arrived in the first couple of months here, we were very guarded, and it was just the guardedness that we had learned in Canada. Uh, to protect ourselves, a survival instinct, to always be a little bit suspect of what other people's intentions really are. Yeah. But after we got here, we discovered that that's a maladaptive way of being in El Salvador. Uh, to be guarded like that, it doesn't serve you. It actually hinders you in El Salvador. We had to learn to let that guard down and trust people. And that's a seismic shift in our experience of life. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. What about you? Jessica. Well, that was kind of heavy. Thanks anyway. No kidding. <laughs> um, well, I, I would have to agree with what, a lot of what Ryan said. Like, there's this thing about um, having to keep your guard up and having a wall and not really being able to, like, well, can I trust this person? What, what's in it for them if they're trying to help me? Can um, I be genuine? Can I be honest in this yeah. situation? Yeah. And uh, there's, there's that, and there's obviously the lighthearted side. Like, no way in Canada would I have ever learned how to cut a coconut with a machete. <laughs> That's, That's right. right. You know? You know? Yeah. So. And we're still learning that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, it's uh, it's, it's getting cool. better, but the first ones were pretty rough. Yeah. <laughs> Take some time to get the technique. Yeah. They make it look so easy on the streets. 
yeah, then you go try, oh, wait a second, that's not really, yeah. <laughs> it's not that easy as it seems. Right. Jessica, let's say on the female perspective on the country, mm -hmm. what's your favorite store here and why? Ironically, my, as a female, my favorite store in all of El Salvador is a hardware store <laughs> called Vidri's. And I was in the city, mm -hmm. and I don't know what area it is exactly. It's everywhere, there's many. It's, yeah. Oh, there's many. Mm -hmm. there's yeah. many. So, anyway, <laughs> so that's my favorite store. I don't know if anybody out there who agrees with me, who shares the same love I have for Vidri's, but they literally have everything you need. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. They have, like, the, they have the fluid for the tiki torches. Mm -hmm. That's hard to get. They yeah. have the charcoal for the barbecue mm -hmm. uh, at a really good price. They have scented candles um, and all that other bulbs. stuff and yeah. anything that you could need. Uh, like the really nice kind of light bulbs that mm -hmm. have that warm light. It's hard to find. And yeah. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Ryan? Same thing. Same. Vidri. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Love going to Vidri. They're friendly to the dogs. You can yeah, bring your dog yeah, in. <laughs> you Asus allowed in there as well. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Vidri is also my wife's favorite store. Mm -hmm. And I recently found out that it's also Tom's favorite store. Yeah. <laughs> our other Canadian friend that we did an interview actually, so you can check it out on my channel. More Canadians here than you could possibly think. Yeah. I, I think I met more Canadians here than any other uh, nationality at this point. Well, a lot of Canadians are taken off now. Um, after the um, Emergencies Act was invoked, uh, a lot of Canadians woke up and they didn't recognize their country anymore. And they didn't feel safe in their country anymore, and we're included in that. And uh, I think more Canadians have left than is generally known. Uh, most have gone to Mexico. Uh, but the number is probably in the many, many thousands of Canadians who've already left precisely because of how Canada has shifted, lurched really in an authoritarian direction. I mean, it makes sense because what happens in the United States is that people can change state. So yeah. they yeah. can pick something different. If they don't like where they are, they can vote with their feet. That's right. But I suppose in Canada, it's not that simple. Like you need to get out of the border probably. Yeah, it's not quite as, it's more homogenous mm -hmm. in Canada. Um, there's one province, Alberta, that tends to be the rebel province. It's like the uh, Texas of yeah. Canada? The, I think I've heard that, that's <laughs> funny, <laughs> okay. But other provinces are really just variations on a theme. Yeah. yeah. What do you guys miss the most from Canada at this point? Family. Family. Family, yeah. probably. I mean, yeah. Other than maple syrup. Yeah. Uh, probably our families. Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, we were just talking about this earlier this week. Mm -hmm. um, I have a sister and a nephew. Uh, you have Many six, sisters. seven sisters. Six sisters. Six sisters. I can't yeah. keep count. Seven, um, including Yeah. And, uh, you know, we look north and we follow what's happening there, and it causes us to wonder if we'll ever see them again. Yeah. Because, uh, like, the wisdom of us returning for a visit is questionable. Yeah. And uh, their willingness to come here for a visit or to move, to live, to stay is also in doubt. Yeah. And so it's, it's painful sometimes. Yeah. And uh, especially when they're like, well, when are you coming home to visit? And I'm like, yeah. I've only been here for less than a year. Not like you. Like, I probably won't be going, leaving this country for decades until things pipe down a little bit in Canada if they ever do, but... Mm -hmm. That's how I feel too, and this is the only place in the world mm -hmm. that is keeping some sanity and that is actually looking forward and going up and getting better because mm -hmm. everywhere else is just in decline, steep decline, like, and it doesn't look like there is gonna be <laughs> a wall to this decline. Yeah. It's very sad, it's scary. Yeah, and uh, the president touched on this in a recent speech. Uh, he talked about, and I'll pay our paraphrase here, he talked about how uh, the values that make a society great, the values, the morals that make a society great, are declining uh, in all the countries that previously held them and became great. But those same values are being rediscovered here, and, and they're flourishing in real time. Day by day, it's more and more, and we can see the effects of that percolating throughout the whole society. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that was a great uh, speech from the president. It gave me goosebumps. Uh, yeah. today. And it, it also makes sense. It's not that hard, if you think about it. To keep a society decent, it's not that hard. You know, and Bukele is giving the playbook to everybody else, starting from safety and then going to Bitcoin. So let's talk about Bitcoin. Okay. Sure, yeah. How has your perception of Bitcoin changed uh, from Canada? to El Salvador. Do you guys, do you, do you guys use it too? Oh, yeah. Daily, 
Yeah, if you, in terms of um, total value, uh, more of our data, our transactions are in Bitcoin than in dollars. Yeah. Uh, and we're finding that that's able to increase more and more all the time. Um, Jessica is the one who got us into Bitcoin yeah. initially. Really? Yeah. 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 We when um, when the um, Canadian government started printing money and just sending it to everybody uh, because of the lockdowns that mm -hmm. they imposed. Um, uh, we started uh, having the conversation about inflation. Like, obviously, this is going to cause inflation down the line in a couple of years. There's no other possible outcome. What do we do with mm -hmm. our savings? We want to buy a house. We want to build a house or buy some land. We, like, we want a future. And we saw that that was threatened, uh, yeah. right? And we looked at gold. We looked at other precious metals. We thought about just dumping it all into real estate now. Um, and then Jessica said in the midst of that conversation, which was quite animated, she just blurted out, what about Bitcoin, yeah. right? So it started as an inflation hedge. Yeah. And as soon as she said that, we started looking at it because my interest was peaked right away. I was like, oh, right, yeah, yeah. that sounds well, awesome. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I had, yeah. it was on my back, it was on the back burner for like about a year and a half. Oh, and if only you had said so earlier. I know, I know, <laughs> but I wasn't sure. Like, okay, yeah. how I came about it was I was listening to one of my old friends. Like he had, he, him and his buddy had a podcast and they had, they had the whole, they had an episode on Bitcoin and they didn't, they don't understand it. They didn't understand it at the time. I don't know if they do now, but mm -hmm. I, um, I was looking into it and I was thinking about it and I was ruminating it. And I was like, this, this, as much as they don't have any idea of what this Bitcoin is and I don't have any idea of, at the point what this Bitcoin is, it's something at the time because we were saving to buy a house or build a, house. build a house and like you said the inflation it was like we were getting so close but then inflation started happening so i was like all right we need we need something yes That's, we need to yeah. look into all the avenues yeah. and we had looked into like you said other different types of oh investments yeah we and uh, stuff we, like that, we, we sinned we sinned we were also into ethereum Shh. and and Cardano and that's okay. I've been there too. Like <laughs> I don't hide it. I used yeah. to be a shit coiner. <laughs> Thanks to El Salvador, I have learned. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. it's important. And, uh, that's really like like that's where the shift happened. Is once we got here, uh, we found uh, a place where you're not just buying and holding. Mm -hmm. there, in the Bitcoin community, there's this 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 attitude mm -hmm. that's like don't spend your sats ever. Just buy and hold. And it's kind of like a Wall Street bets kind of vibe. You know, like hodl diamond hands, right? And um, I don't know, it's, it's a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. It's meant to be used transactionally in a way that's sovereign and which mm -hmm. liberates people instead of oppresses them, right? And so the wonderful thing about doing so in El Salvador where it's legal tender is you can go to the grocery store and buy your groceries using Bitcoin. You can pay your rent as we do in Bitcoin, um, et cetera, et cetera. And this creates a, an economy that is circular and Bitcoin is moving and exchanging for value between people in a way that is unfettered by governments, banks, and all the fallible people who get in the way. Uh, that's an amazing thing and was part of our shift in our perspective on Bitcoin when we first got here. You know? Very interesting. It's also so surprising because usually in the couple is uh, the dude, is the, the man know, that right? gets into this techie stuff, <laughs> investment stuff, Bitcoin. Uh, the first time I hear this, that's funny. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Cool. Unusual. And to touch on what you said, that's very important. In reality, money, real money, should hold his value. Mm -hmm. So if your money doesn't hold the value, I mean, that's not money. That's right. Yeah. That's something that people don't understand because we are so programmed by central banking, fiat, printing. Yeah. That's very hard for people to drop yeah. their heads around mm -hmm. until they go down the Bitcoin rabbit yes. hole, right? Yeah. And this is, this is a common mistake that is made when you talk about holding value. Um, people object, they say, oh, but the price goes up, the price goes down, Bitcoin's not holding its value. But this is using US dollars and other fiat currencies to measure something that can't be measured that way. That's sort of like standing in front of a funhouse mirror and trying to measure your height. Like you're not getting a representation of the actual thing that you're measuring when you use fiat currencies to measure them, right? Because they're distorted, they're manipulated and, and, and insane. Mm -hmm. um, the way to measure Bitcoin's value is against goods and services and actual things that people use. And if you look at that history, 
back in 2000, what, 12, 13, it took 35, 50 Bitcoin to buy a pizza. Uh, but today, one Bitcoin will buy you a Toyota, right? So it's, um, it's clear to see where the value is and what is holding on to the value. It's not dollars. When in doubt, zoom out. That's right. <laughs> yeah, because short term can be very manipulative and tricky. Okay, guys, let's close this interview, which was amazing, by the way. Okay. We, our last, my last question for you is, what are your dreams and hopes for you here in El Salvador and also for the country? Well, we, uh, we had a dream when we were in Canada to build a home on a piece of land and uh, have a garden and, uh, you know, sort of tend to our, our own simple little life. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we still have that dream. So for us personally, that's where we want to get in the coming years, uh, is to a nice piece of land somewhere with maybe near a body of water. Uh, and just, you know, live a simple, quiet uh, existence. Uh, as far as the country itself, um, we just want... I want to, this to prosper yeah. as, as much as it is humanly possible yeah. because the people of El Salvador have been through absolute yeah. hell. Yeah. And I think if anybody on this planet Earth deserves yeah. God's good grace, it's 100%. Salvadorians. 100%. Yeah, they've, they've been through so much for so many years that whatever they see as Salvadoran people as prosperity and success, that's what we wish for, for El Salvador. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing, guy. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you guys for yeah. being here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. This was great. Yeah. yeah. It was a pleasure. I learned a lot from you. Very, very and likewise. Yes. And likewise. Yeah. I wish you could teach me how to grow a beard. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to do it, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you so much, Francesco, for having us on this um, awesome idea. If you want to head over to Money Delic's YouTube channel, that's Francesco's channel. Part one is over there. Mm -hmm. Again, you can watch them in any order. But over there, we have a house tour. We talk about uh, like places to shop, places to eat, things of that nature, yep. how we get our groceries. Uh, check it out. Don't miss it. And while you're over there, maybe you want to check out some more of his videos. Yeah. Maybe you want to click the bell. For notifications. notifications after you subscribe yeah. and don't forget to do that just down below as well mm -hmm. all right follow us on twitter follow us on noster all the links you need are in the description mm -hmm. and we'll catch you next time all right all right bye, bye.